Upset feeling the contact's intentional here, but overall just a hockey play, a tough hockey play. And we'll see, it looks like he's gonna feel it. He's got 2.27 to go into the second period and we know that his trainer was out there making sure that he was keeping track. Looks towards the net, shot it in on goal, that one went wide. Now a battle along the half board. Wang gets the puck, cuts towards the middle, shoots and a good save there by Crosby to Costa. Romano in the, in the corner. And that one will be cleared all the way down the ice there by Aiden Lane. Minute 20 left to go here in the second period. 50 seconds left to go in the power play as the JRC player is down. Marley's were on a line change here. It looked like a high event collision right there. I don't see an intentional play. They were scrambling, like we said, the long line change here, racing over to the bench. Malkasian is saying it's intentional. I just find it hard to believe that with these two teams and what they know about each other that they would get dirty here. I just see a high event collision on a line change. Temperatures are flaring here, but it certainly didn't look like a dirty play, just one of those collisions. Two long stoppages here. You see the Junior Canadians really forcing it here at the end of the power play, forcing DaCosta, who's come in cold. He's had to deal with it. Right now down five to two as the officials are still in conference about what took place in that bench area. And the player is still down on the ice receiving attention from a trainer and we'll let you know when he gets back to his feet. This is one where you really need your linesman helping you out as well. I mean, everyone's worried about an offside or icing. It seems like an easy play. Hey, they're just going away, but moving very quickly, trying to get to the bench. You don't want to get caught with the too many men call. We know the officials had a quick conference right now. Richard Power talking to referee Cam Finney, and we'll see if the linesmen were able to assist in a call. I didn't see it as a dirty play. I don't have a Marley's number for you, just that there was a pretty quick collision. We know our folks in the truck are trying to track that down for us as well. And that's Evan Malkasian getting back to his feet and he'll head to the locker room under his own power and never want to see moments like that. And Players down on the ice and we'll see what the referees assess here. Just over a minute, and minute left to go here in the second frame. Well, Katzen's still in there. They have a double minor which looks like they're going with perhaps a head contact penalty if they got some help. Coach Richard Power, he's going to argue this down. I get it. He's got to advocate for his team. You're down 5-2. You're trying to get the next goal. Things are not going well, but here's the adversity as we get an opportunity to see Armelin, who was knocked over in one of those hockey plays as well. Yes, the two goaltenders for JRC, Alex and Nico. About everything is the same. They're goalie partners. They both play the same position and they look pretty identical, identical twins out there. But we want to find some of the different, or actually they're fraternal twins. They look a, a lot a lot like each other, but some of the differences between them. Well, like Marc-Andre Fleury versus James Reimer. Rocky versus Home Alone. Rocky? Well, what, what year did Rocky come out? I mean, they're definitely watching that online. It's, an, it's old in the soul. Netflix. He's yeah. an old soul. <laughs> well, Coach Richard Power not happy. The double minor being assessed. And the linesman and the referees had the conference together. And we'll see if things settle down here. The temperature among the fans getting a little heated internally. And we'll see what the Junior Canadians want to do with the result here. They could really put this away now. So 34 seconds remaining in the Katzen penalty. And a double major or double minor issued to Jerkusica. So 27 seconds left to go in. Five on three action, and then it'll be five on four to conclude the rest of the period. So four minutes for slew footing is the call as Graziano gains the blue line in the corner. Sends it around. Martel back to collect. Martel and Graziano will trade places. This one comes for O'Brien. Katzen's penalty is over. And already into the action, making a nice... 
poke check there, but JRC is back on the attack. O'Brien tried to send it to that far side, but Katzen will steal the puck and in the final 10 seconds have an opportunity here, but a good play there by Graziano. Uh, that one will be sent all the way down the ice and that's how the period will end. So after two periods of play, five to two is where we stand. The Junior Canadians in front over the Toronto Marlboros in the inaugural Mustache Cup here from the Mattamy Athletic Centre. Peter, your, your thoughts on the second period? Well, this second period has to probably be the worst second period the Toronto Marlies have had this season. The power play hasn't shown much. The penalty kills giving up opportunities. Losing their cool. They went with the double minor slew foot. So we saw a lot of action there. And it's one of those things where if tonight's not the night, you still have to find a way for those teaching moments for Coach Richard Power and the Toronto Marlies. And JRC, as we, have we, have, as we have mentioned all night, just so dominant against the Marlies. And again, so in this one, how can the Marlies turn the tide going into the third period? How do you slow down the junior Canadians, right? You have to make them play defense. If it's five on five, you got all the little speedsters. And I hate saying little, but they are little. They're a little bit smaller than a defenseman. And they have the ability to create so much speed in tight spaces here with the puck on their stick. When you wonder how a kid never made the show, they were fast, but they couldn't do it with the puck on their stick. And you see it now, Matt, this junior Canadians team, they can dangle and create offense in tight areas. Well, talking with Chris Malkasian before the game, he said he wasn't completely happy with how his team started the season, but said this game is a prime opportunity for him to kind of flip the switch and get his team back to the championship team that we saw last year. Do you think tonight is the night where we, we see that switch? I think he's going to show up at your house and say, can you get me a TV game every Saturday? <laughs> against a big opponent because his team has really shown up here. It's been a tough season for him, not because, you know, it, hockey's fun, right? Yeah. It's fun, but it's been two to one, 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 two to one, one, nothing. As a coach, every shift has got to be right or you're losing a game. And tonight he's got a 5-2 lead against the Toronto Marlies, that big rival from last year. It's got to feel good. I know he's not enjoying it right now. They still have 15 minutes and then they could possibly really enjoy it. Let's send it downstairs to Kayla Karim, who has a 